Good evening and welcome to our premiere viewing of the Road to the Final film, a film to commemorate our victory over Rangers in the 1921 Scottish Cup final. Twelve months ago, the Partick Thistle board tasked me with coming up with a, a way to commemorate this great achievement in our club's history alongside the anniversary of our 1971 League Cup final success over Celtic. And on the back of that, the Firhill Football Heritage Group was formed, which comprises a number of very enthusiastic and hard-working individuals. Amongst them are one of our directors, John Penman, a board advisor, Brian Donald, one of our club historians, Graham Nisbet, and a number of members of our media team, including Craig Walker, Graham McRoberts, Brian Welsh, and Danny Muir. And on the back of these discussions, a number of initiatives were, were agreed on. We decided to have a replica kit produced that we've worn on in two matches, won our uh, cup tie against Dundee United and last night's league fixture against Montrose. Uh, there was a commemorative book which has been produced, uh, an artwork that will be uh, available to view from June and we've also had replica medals produced which will be presented to family members of the squad that took part, part in the, the final, along with being available to, to buy from, from our supporters. And the, the central element of the uh, commemoration of the 1921 final was this film. So the film tells the story of the, the road to the final through the, the games played, the, the, the player profiles information ab about that, but also, very importantly, the, the film comprises the stories and memories of our supporters and family members of the, the, the squad, fam, um, supporters reminiscing of their grandfathers and, and great-grandfathers, great their stories of the, the final, and, and this plays a real central element to the to the, to the story as it, as it unfolds. These stories and, and memories of the 1921 victory, we hope will act as a, a catalyst to a, an engagement with, between the, the club and their supporters with the um, past games and, and occasions that um, have, have taken place and, and form a, a, a part of the, a central part of the, the history of the club. The, the 1921 Cup Final and the 1971 Cup Final really epitomise what it, the best parts of being Partick Thistle and, and what that means. Uh, both matches represented victories over the old firm who at the time both sides were without a doubt the best club sides in Britain and possibly even further afield. The 1921 squad, which was managed by George Easton and comprised Campbell, Crichton, Bullock, Harris, Wilson, Borthwick, Blair, Kinlock, Johnston, McMenemy and Salisbury. These players did what every Partick Thistle fan dreams of and what our support sing about every Saturday to namely bring the, the cup back to, to Mary Hill. These, and the, it's a, an overused word at times, but these legends did what we all aspire to do. And they, they set a, a wonderful benchmark for all future generations of supporters and players to, to try and, and emulate. And it's so important that the passing of time doesn't diminish the importance of 
these players and, and these people to our history. And we must continue to use these stories and then the memories that they evoke to inspire future squads of Partick Thistle fans to, to try and, and emulate their success. I would just like to end by passing on the sincere thanks of the Partick Thistle board and myself to, to all the members of the Firhill Football Heritage Group for their fantastic work over the, the past six months that, are, that culminates in tonight's event and I really look forward to working with the rest of the guys again in preparation for October's commemorations of the 1971 success. And a special mention also to our president, Mr. Robert Reid, and you'll see his input to the, to the process and the, the film as it, as it unfolds, and, and I know that you'll, you'll definitely enjoy that. So sit back, enjoy the film, enjoy your evening, and I look forward to welcoming you back to the, to the stadium, hopefully sometime soon. The year is 1921. In the UK, the miners are on strike and throughout the country, coal is being rationed. As transport union members of the Triple Alliance refuse to support the miners' strike action, the Alliance collapses and the National Unemployed Workers' Committee movement is set up by members of the Communist Party. In sport, Tottenham Hotspur under Scottish manager Peter McWilliam beat Wolverhampton Wanderers 1-0 in the FA Cup final at Stamford Bridge. While in Scotland, Rangers win Division 1 by 10 clear points from Celtic with Partick Thistle in sixth place. And on Saturday the 16th of April 1921, Partick Thistle and Rangers meet in the final of the 43rd staging of Scotland's most prestigious football knockout competition, the Scottish Cup. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, take you back for a moment or two to the 16th of April, 1921. Scottish Cup final day, and the result was uh, Partick Thistle one, Rangers nil. Now, isn't that absolutely delightful? Now, the road to the final, well, that was a long and arduous process. We drew Hibernian away, and that in itself is quite a tall uh, order. And uh, to be honest, that could have been the end before the thing started. But they went ahead and it took Thistle 11 games to reach this cup final. First up was Hibs at Easter Road, 0-0. Replay at Firhill, 0-0. Third game, Hibernian 0, Partick Thistle 1. So that was us through to round three. We got a bye in the first round, Hibs in the second round, third round, East Stirlingshire. Now, that should have been fairly straightforward. In actual fact, it wasn't. We didn't play at all well. Uh, we got through by two goals to one. Next up, Motherwell. So that was three games against Hibs. Coming up now, three games against Motherwell.
two two away, nil nil at Fairhill, and then two one at the neutral uh, venue. Now that took us then to face Hearts, and would you believe it? Three more games, two nil nil results, and then eventually at Ibrox, part of this of two, Heart of Midlothian, nil. So everything was then set up for the uh, final. Um, I found out that my dad had been to the 1921 Cup final uh, when we both were at Hamden uh, for the League Cup final. On the way back uh, from the game, my dad said that he had won up in me, uh, having been seen Thistle win the Scottish Cup in 1921, and he's now seen Thistle win the League Cup. So he's got one up for me, but hopefully this year we'll, uh, we'll win the Scottish Cup and I'll, ha I'll have one up on, on my sons as well now. Uh, so uh, we'll see today. I, the recollection that it was my dad and my grandpa, my dad would be only about 14 at the time, um, and they're probably fortunate to be at the game because the day before, the main, the, there was supposed to be a strike with the transport and it was called off on the Friday afternoon. Uh, as far as I know, my dad went to the game on the tram car from Partick. Uh, the family lived in Partick and was, they went to Partick in 1873 and supported Thistle. Since then, and even when my boys are supporting Thistle now, so they were walked up from B Street for, um, where the, the play park was, up Metland Street, where the, the now the train station is. It wasn't there in those days. Uh, I walked up on a Dumbarton Road at Peel Street, where the Thistle supporters bus used to leave back in the 40s that my dad was a member of. Um, they were taking the, the number nine tram, which was known as our, all the trams in Glasgow were numbered and they were also coloured and it was a red one. So they were on the right colour uh, and the tram, tram car came from Dalmuir West and it went all the way to Auckland Shugle and it stopped outside Celtic Park. Um, so that was my grandpa. I never knew my grandpa, so I could never get any stories off my, my grandpa at that time. But I'm wishing I'd listened to my dad a wee bit more uh, about the 1921 Cup final. But probably his recollection of it was not that great, only being 14. But he was a great football man and he could tell you all sorts of things about Thistle over the years. Um, and he followed McMullen who was one of the star players for Thistle on that day. He went to see him at Wembley in 1928. And we've got a photograph of him at one of the stations. And we think that is his Thistle scar that he had on at that time. But I don't think there was many scars scanning the crowds that were you know, seeing footage of, of that cup final. So I don't think there'd be any rosettes or scarves that we know of, but we never know, somebody might pop up and tell us. So my dad has always had one up in me, um, and I, I hope to, that we can get the Scottish Cup this year, if we can beat, you know, get through the first couple of rounds and get to the final. But I don't think we need to play as many games as they did back then, having played 11 games. So that's my recollection of what my dad did on the way to the game. My, my father attended the, the 1921 Cup final. Uh, my father was a, a lifelong Jag supporter. He was, he was born in 1908. And he was actually the, the son of a party Thistle supporter. My, my great, my, sorry, my, my grandfather was called John Boyd. And uh, he uh, supported Partick Thistle from when he was a young boy when he moved to Partick. And uh, he actually 
talked about watching Partick Thistle on the old ground. Um, and, and my father went to the 1921 Cup final with his dad. Um, he was only 12 at the time. Uh, and uh, I think he actually said to me, you know, the game was boycotted and uh, because he put the prices up and he thinks that he, his father would to pay more for it. He uh, got the ticket because it was cheap, uh, you know, because, you know, there wasn't a demand. So anyway, my father was there in 1921. He talked, didn't talk him an awful lot about the game to me, but it was just the fact that he'd been there. So I suppose that a 12-year-old, you know, he may not remember that much about it, but he just remembered being there and the fact that they won. Uh, so, he, you know, he had, a, he had a really nice time. My great-grandfather, Bill Irwin, was born on the 7th of July, 1900. He was born in party to Irish immigrant parents, big doll. Uh, he, he was nine years old when Thistle moved to Farhill and he had been going to Thistle matches. He was a wee boy all the way up to his, I'm not going to say all, but he, in his 20s, his early 70s. Uh, obviously, I never got to meet my great-grandfather because like, he died when my mum was sick. Uh, so I've had to rely on like the family telling me about him, like my uncles who are older and my mum tell about him. He had two great loves in his life, horse racing and Patrick Thistle. Um, he attended the 1921 Scottish Cup final. Uh, him and a couple of his pals all club together. Basically, they, they got the money together and got tickets to the game. We beat Rangers 1-0. Uh, it was obviously after the war. Uh, my great-grandfather was a fireman in the First World War, uh, and he saved the lives of 31 people. Uh, obviously, I cannot take on the tradition of supporting Thistle, so I'm proud of that, uh, because I, at least I'm carrying on a legacy, you know, so I'm carrying on a legacy and I'm proud that I'm carrying on a legacy. My name's Doug Blair, uh, Douglas McInnes Blair to be correct. Uh, and my grandfather, John Blair, sometimes called Johnny Blair, uh, scored the kind of famous goal. Uh, did I really realise that when, as a kind of four and five year old, because we lived up in Glasgow and John Blair had moved back to Salkut, well, John Blair always lived in Salkut. So we would make the statutory every two, three weeks trip down to Salkut. And if I wasn't sick from being wallowed about in the back of a Ford Anglia, uh, We'd see my grandfather and we'd see my grandmother. I never really, in truth, realised what he'd done and what he'd achieved. I, only in later years I've gone back and I've talked to some of the party thistle history people, found out more about that, found out more of his life. I, it's intriguing because <clears throat> he was one of a family of, I think, six. I, <clears throat> his father, Campbell, was a fisherman. And I believe drowned at sea and left his poor mother to bring up six children. So he, he couldn't have had an easy time with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how these days, sorry, in those days in 1921, how simple it was to go from Adrosan up to Glasgow. Obviously, you would go on the train. Uh, and he must have had to do that a couple of times a week for training. So I, I'm learning about my, I'm learning about my grandfather. Uh, it was interesting days as well, I read, because we were in the 1920s uh, when things were difficult for people. I think they even played the game on a miner strike and I'm 20 years in the coal mining industry, so there we go. Uh, I did, I, I, I had a rugby playing father. <clears throat> so my dad tended to take me to rug, rugby matches. And for those from the Adrosan Salkut Send, it was Adrosan Academicals that I had to run up and down beside the pitch as my father did. Uh, and he never really made much of what his father had achieved. I remember being taken to a Partick Thistle game uh, and I kind of, as a dopey nine-year-old, uh, 
this wee guy sat and stood next to me, and remember stood next to me in those days. And so this is what, the mid 60s. Started telling me how good this team had been and they'd won the cup. So the stupid nine year old says, yeah, that was my granddad. So my father was able to retrieve the whiskey bottle before I was given a gurgle of whiskey from this wee guy that was next to me who meant it absolutely genuinely. Uh, what else do I know about John Blair? He was a plumber. He got married to uh, my grandmother, who he met in Musselburgh. Interesting that. I mean, he lives in a and meets them in Musselburgh. They must have been playing away games or something for him to, to, meet a, to meet a lady there. And they came across and they set up home. He set up his plumbing business in, in Salcots. Uh, some people are a little puzzled how he came to stop playing for Partick Thistle. Uh, I think I've got copies of his contracts up to about 1924. And it kind of fits with him getting married, uh, probably more family pressures on him. And also, also tragically, in I think 1928, he lost a son to diphtheria. Within, I think it was 10 days of my, <clears throat> my father being born. So that must have been a, a, a kind of stressful time. And I could, I could probably understand in those days while that might he want to might play football a little closer to home uh, and not be traveling away maybe once, two, three times a week. Because uh, I even puzzled over how would they travel to away games in 1921? Did they have a party thistle coach? Uh, or did they have to go on the train? It, it, it probably took a lot longer than it does these days. So, uh, John, after playing rugby, uh, sorry, after playing football, that's the trouble with the rugby playing father, uh, eventually he, he carried on with his plumbing business. Uh, his, one of his other son, Ian, my uncle, worked in the plumbing business with him. He retired. I, I can remember going to visit them. And one of the things he <clears throat> specialised in, he used to have the forerunners of remote controlled model yachts, but the model yachts that were very clever that they all sell steering gear. And he used to take them down to uh, a boating pond somewhere in Salkos, but it had a sort of set of pram wheels that these yachts were, this yacht was big enough to have to fit on. Uh, and I can remember a couple of times going down and seeing him sailing his yachts up and down. Uh, really, to a certain extent, that's all I can remember of him. The sad bit is I can remember going to visit him in hospital in Balach Mile, which is I think down the road from Mockland, uh, after he's had a stroke. And, and I also, remember taking a phone call from my uncle Ian and having to tell my dad that his, his father, John Blair, had passed away. So really, that, that's all I know about him. Uh, it's clear that in those days, professional football did not set you up for life, uh, as it might do now. So that's my story with John Blair. I do like the idea of giant killing. Sorry, Glasgow Rangers, but I, I do I really do appreciate it. And I think that's great. Uh, and I think it's wonderful that we're that party thistle are beginning to bring all this history out uh, so that people can know about it. Thistle struck the first blow in the lead up to the cup final by being able to play in their colours at the time, a blue shirt and white shorts with the thistle emblem in a patch on the left side of the jersey. This meant that Rangers had to change out of the traditional blue jerseys to white tops. The man in charge of the team at that time was Partick Thistle Secretary, George Easton. And the team was as follows. Campbell, Crichton, Bullock, Harris, Wilson, Borthwick, Blair, Kinloch, Johnston, McMenemy, and Salisbury. And they managed the best result from a Partick Thistle team for uh, many a long day. And of course, a further hundred years have gone by and Thistle haven't won the Scottish Cup again. So let's hope that that gets uh, rectified. And I want to make it quite clear that uh, no matter what you may think, I have seen 3,500 part of Thistle games, but I was not present at the Cup final in 1921. I may be looking rather the worse for wear, but I was certainly not there at that game. 
Now, what I think should happen is that people who support Thistle memorize these names because these are people that are outstandingly important and it should be part of the curriculum in Maryhill Primary Schools, what I've just uh, said about that particular team. In the run-up to the final, Thistle lost two key men through injury, centre-half Willie Hamilton and Jimmy McMullen, who had played at left half for Scotland against England the previous Saturday at Hamden. However, the team that was selected for Thistle in the final was still littered with experience and international caps, epitomised in grand style by goalkeeper Kenny Campbell. Campbell had made 125 appearances for Liverpool in the nine years prior to moving to Thistle in 1920 for a fee of £1,750. He played 96 times for Thistle between 1920 and 1922 and was capped by Scotland on eight occasions. Tom Crichton and Willie Bullock were the fullbacks, Crichton on the right, Bullock on the left. Crichton joined Thistle in 1919, initially playing centre-half before moving position to right-back. He made 229 appearances for the club in total. Bullock captained the team in the cup final, and his career at Thistle sees him regarded as one of Scotland's most consistent players. He made 471 appearances for Thistle and twice represented the Scottish League. Thistle fielded a half-back line of Joe Harris, Matt Wilson and Walter Borthwick. Harris joined Thistle in 1913, making 241 appearances. And whilst at Fir Hill, he was capped twice for Scotland, playing against Wales and Ireland in February 1921. Centre-half Matt Wilson, an ex-Queen's Park stroller, played 117 times as a jag between 1920 and 1924, scoring seven goals over the piece, whilst Borthwick came from Hibs to make his debut for the Jags in 1918, aged just 19. He left the club after four years, having represented the Jags on 74 occasions. Outside right, John Blair spent six seasons at Fir Hill, making 170 appearances for the Jags in all competitions and scoring 36 goals. Blair's Thistle career was sandwiched between two spells of playing for his hometown team, Saltcoats Victoria. The highlight was surely to be, though, his contribution to the cup final. Inside right, Jimmy Kinloch arrived at Thistle from Queen's Park in the summer of 1920. He stayed for eight years, during which time he played for Scotland once. In total, he made 241 appearances and scored 75 goals for Thistle. He later served for 30 years as a director of the club. Davy Johnson joined the Jags in 1920 and made 60 appearances, scoring three goals during his three seasons at Fir Hill. He played in five of the 11 games in the Scottish Cup in 1921. He missed playing in the first six games, came in at right back in the second replay against Motherwell and then played in the remaining four games, including the final at centre forward. Jimmy Napoleon McMenemy had joined Thistle one year before the Cup final on a free transfer from Celtic, for whom he had played since 1902. An abundantly talented footballer with the vision and intelligence to dictate a game, McMenemy was nicknamed Napoleon and he marshalled the Celtic forward line which bossed Scottish football for a generation. He appeared in Jags colours on 73 occasions along with 12 Scottish international caps and represented the Scottish League 14 times. There have been few more popular players at Fir Hill than Willie Sally Salisbury. The likeable Salisbury was described as an idiosyncratic player, one minute loved, the next loathed by the Fir Hill faithful. He made 354 appearances for the Jags over a 10-year career, scoring 58 goals during that time. Now, there were various rather unusual aspects about this final. Uh, first of all, it became known as the boycott final. 
Uh, the reason for that being that uh, there was a minor strike on. The gate was paltry, 28,000. The previous cup final in 1920, Kilmarnock, Albion Rovers, 90,000. And we could only get 28. Now, in a sense, when all those Celtic supporters didn't turn up, that was an advantage to Partick Thistle. The fact that the uh, match was played at uh, all those Rangers supporters didn't turn up, I should say. The match was played at uh, Parkhead, so that meant a further group of Rangers fans didn't go. So it was a, a kind of a false situation in some ways. Rangers were red-hot favourites to win the Cup, being acknowledged at the time as the best in Britain. In two seasons, Rangers had played in 84 league matches and lost only three. Thistle were given little or no chance, particularly after the loss of Hamilton and McMullen. Rangers enjoyed the majority of the play in the opening quarter, but Thistle's defence stood firm. Then, midway through the first half, Thistle went on the attack and a sweeping pass from Salisbury was picked up by John Blair to shoot past Rangers goalkeeper William Robb for what turned out to be the only goal of the game. Although Thistle had some chances in the remainder, Rangers mainly stormed the Thistle defence, but they stood firm, inspired by goalkeeper Kenny Campbell. Jimmy McMenemy was also outstanding on the day, living up to his nickname Napoleon, encouraging the younger Thistle players and superbly marshalling Rangers star player Andrew Cunningham out of the game and Rangers out of the rhythm. Anyway, the game was, uh, as I say, at uh, Celtic Park. The uh, crowd was poor. The match itself got underway and uh, Thistle scored in 20 minutes. Rangers were a player down at the time uh, off for uh, treatment. Uh, pass from uh, Menemy to uh, centre field and out to John Blair from Sydney Street in Sulco, by the way. Bang! 1-0 Thistle. But with 25 minutes of the first half and the whole of the second half to come against a very, very strong Rangers team, it seemed that we had our work cut out but they were a strong outfit. They fought for every ball and emerged eventually victorious. So that is the only time that Thistle have won the Scottish Cup. In 140 odd years of our uh, existence, so it was a very, very special occasion indeed. After the match, Tom White, the president of the Scottish Football Association, presented the cup to Partick Thistle chairman T.C. Reid in the pavilion at Celtic Park. The players were to receive their engraved medals at a later date, direct from the club. As this letter from George Easton to John Blair shows, the medals from the club were, in fact, posted to some of the players, along with wages cash. £27, 12 shillings, for five weeks doesn't sound like much in today's terms, but the modern equivalent would be £1,380 or £276 per week. Winning the Scottish Cup in 1921 was an historic achievement in the chequered history of Partick Thistle Football Club, and one which is yet to be repeated. Someday, soon, hopefully.
just going to say one more time, uh, Campbell, Crichton, Bullock, Harris, Wilson, Porter, Blair, and Locke, Johnson, McMenamin, and Salisbury. So get that memorized up in here as soon as you can. All right, good night. Hi, what a fantastic film. I'm sure for all Partick Thistle supporters out there, a very memorable time for everybody associated with the club. A uh, fantastic achievement from the, the team of 21 to, to go all the way through to the final. Played a lot of games, as you've, as you've just seen there on the film. I think the semi-final was three games before you get to the final, which is incredible. And the history of any football club uh, is always marked by the achievements of players from past or present. And uh, I'm sure the present players, as we did in 71, thrived on trying to emulate everything they had done in 21. I was fortunate enough uh, in my earlier days at Partick Thistle, I was a 17-year-old boy, uh, went down in a pre-season game with Partick Thistle uh, to play Preston North End. And before the game, uh, Dave McParland brought Kenny Campbell into the dressing room to be introduced to him. It was a fantastic gentleman to talk about the, the time of 21. He wasn't the tallest of goalkeepers, I think he was about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 but always a, a great memory uh, and for him. And I remember him saying to me, remember now it's 50 years, you know, the, the, the pressure could be on you to win something. Uh, later on, uh, which I, I tried to assure them that we would do our, our best to everything that they had uh, achieved, uh, and thankfully we did. What a fantastic year this is for the club. Uh, as I've said, the achievements, there's been lots of achievements through the years, but obviously 21 and 71 are big years uh, in, in the history of the club. Fortunately enough, I was part of the 71 team, which will, will always be remembered. Uh, I really do think this is an important year for the club that we remember 21 and 71. Unfortunately, supporters aren't here to celebrate it just now, but we hope by October that we can all get together and celebrate both uh, occasions. As I said, they are big, big parts of the club's history and I'm sure the supporters would love to buy into everything that's achieved and everything that we're going to do in this year. Obviously starting off with 21, the cup final and, and everything the guys have put in uh, on the committee to, to make this a very memorable year for the 21 Scottish Cup winners. The memorabilia that's come out, the scarves, the jumpers, the strips, uh, everything that goes with it, I, I'm sure the supporters will buy into it. Uh, it's always good to have that kind of history uh, in your cupboard uh, or on your wall. Uh, so I think everything that the committee has done to, to achieve this is absolutely remarkable, having it been 100 years ago, and to delve into that history and make it come true again. 71 was always uh, a big year for me, uh, young lad coming into the side and getting to a final in uh, my first year. Uh, were a lot of young boys in that side who will remember 71 uh, vividly. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the film edits of that game only go down to the four goals. Uh, I wish I could watch 90 minutes of it because it, fast, it passed very, very quickly, as all cup finals do, particularly if you win it. But uh, no, it's great. It will be great to meet the rest of the boys this year. And I'm sure the, the supporters of that era, a uh, long-lasting memory of being at that game and celebrating the win, uh, these memories will come back to everybody uh, and make Partick Thistle a very, very happy place this year.